proposal was shot down four years ago. All right, that sets the tone for our discussion this afternoon with our resident analysts. We have with us uh, Diambo Ramogi as well as Ken Gishinga. And unfortunately, Ohoro Ndoho seems to be caught up in traffic, but we still have to proceed. Thank you, gentlemen, for being with us. And uh, I know some of you are still having the hangover yeah. from <laughs> yesterday's town hall where uh, Gishinga, Ohoro, you're part of it. I, myself, I wasn't part of it, and Ramogi. You can tell us more. <laughs> I mean, it was a good opportunity to be able to interrogate uh, some of the policies that have been put in the manifestos. Um, obviously, we were looking at it from a fiscal policy, monetary perspective, and um, I think it's useful because I think it was able to help Kenyans be able to evaluate whether this is what the business community needs. Amazing. Yeah. We certainly look forward to the next town hall, Ramog, isn't it? Absolutely. <laughs> I'm waiting for the Azimio one. Aya, Aya, Bas, and Wajakoya, of course. Yeah, absolutely. Uh, as well as uh, Wahigia. Yeah. We, of course, gentlemen, let's get uh, straight into this uh, tax policy. Um, the country has been subjected to a number of tax measures every year when we do the national budget. Some taxes that we didn't anticipate are literally introduced and this ends up messing up not only with the business community but also to the common monainchi where you are not so sure what new tax will your government give you. What is your take on having a national tax policy that covers and ensures that we don't just get any knee-jerk reactions? Uh, many thanks, Abi. Um, I think the idea of a national tax policy is something we've called for for a long time, and it's good to see that effort has been put in place. Um, from the video clip that you've just played, um, it seemed uh, the one thing they were looking for was predictability, which is quite important for uh, business uh, planning. Uh, but actually, when you think of a tax policy, you need to have four principles to a tax policy. They've only identified one. And the four tax principles, and this is, you know, Adam Smith in the Wealth of Nations. He has the four canons of taxation. Number one is proportionality, that people who make more money need to be able to pay more taxes. Mm -hmm. That by far is the far more important than even mm -hmm. the predictability. Number two is the issue of a predictability, that you're able to pay it in a regular manner. Uh, number three is the issue of efficiency, ability to pay. It has to be simple. It has to be convenient the person paying and number four it has to be in a manner that is uh, uh, within somebody's ability to uh, to be able to make that payment so I think they've only identified the predictability part but for me the most important principle has to be proportionality and that's where the issue of progressive versus regressive tax is mm -hmm. and a lot of people don't understand the difference between a progressive and a regressive tax in fact even if you look at the Kenya Kwanzaa manifesto they talk about removing regressive taxes. But in the next line, they talk about in, uh, VAT. Mm -hmm. And VAT is one of those regressive taxes. So I think we need to go deeper into the principles. So the, a tax policy should be able to tell you about the principles of taxation. Mm -hmm. And if we can't agree on our principles as a country, why don't we just use the set Adam Smith principles, which mm -hmm. most countries use across the world. So I think those are the things that need to come out very clearly moving forward. Interesting. Ramogi, uh, I tend to also listen to uh, Dr. Ndi. He's saying we don't need a tax policy. All we need is a working government which has a very open policy when it comes to taxation. I don't know what is your standpoint on this whole narrative of having a national tax policy. Well, I think we need a tax policy and on that one I'll differ with a good professor. And perhaps I'd, I'd pick it up from where he's left to into an analysis of where we are right now. If you look at the current government, uh, the tax proposals that we've had have been all but regressive. Uh, because you remember the minimum tax, mm -hmm. uh, so that as long as you're doing business, whether you're making profit or loss, then you, mil you will be taxes, uh, yeah. taxed. And, and that's not proportionate, that's not progressive. And you also remember that now we have a digital tax and it really does not take into account how much I make in the digital space. It just covers as long as you're in the digital space, you're expected to pay something. 
And so coming from that background where our tax policy has been knee -jerk, uh, where someone just wakes up and says, because there is a finance bill to be tabled in Parliament, then I need to come up with new tax policies for the year. And uh, they are very short term. It's, it's, it, it does not build up. You don't have enough time to study and see the impact in the economy. And the fact that it has also been very regressive. Rich people don't pay as, many, as much taxes as poor people. It is then important that we have a tax policy that takes into consideration the principles that he has un outlined so that then we can move forward with a little bit of predictability, stability, and you have an economy, I mean, a, tax, a, fix of, a fiscal policy overall that you can actually believe or trust in to take you forward economically. All right. Still same with you, Ramogi. Uh, of course, one of the big conversations in the proposed draft tax policy is introduction of presumptive tax. And, uh, of course, Kenyans have been uh, literally saying they're being taxed to death. <laughs> <laughs> I don't think the issue is a quote-unquote high tax regime. Mm. I think the issue is we have a very high tax regime that's unstable on one hand, but on the other hand, the service delivery that is supposed to complement so that then whatever you remain with is yours for the using, it is not in place. Because the Scandinavian countries like Finland have very high tax regimes, but at the same time, education is free, health facilities are there, and they are free, and in principle, what you remain with is just for you to enjoy. And so that now tells you that there will be no complaint because really there is value in, in, in the taxes that you pay. The taxes we pay, first of all, the president confessed that two billion of it is lost every day. Mm -hmm. That's like um, 700 billion in a year. Um, and and that's, that's almost a third of what a KRA collects. That's huge. The, so there's that wastage. But then there is also the substandard services that Kenyans are expected to, uh, to, 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 to meet. And so then you find the taxes after the tax, what you remain with, you still need to pay a government officer for services. You still need to pay for bad roads. You still need to pay for bad health services. And so then it becomes very expensive. Interesting. And uh, do you believe uh, or the Gishinga in regards to having cumbersome tax um, has a big if impact really on uh, the ease of doing business, for example, where you see SMEs are saying to go over taxed. Mm -hmm. When you look at counties, they also have to re generate re own source revenue. And the rat race towards everyone wants to collect so that they can fund either recurrent or development expenditure is a big headache which is putting us in this dilemma where we don't have a very clear taxation roadmap. I think you're absolutely spot on, Abi. Um, when you overtax a small business, I mean big business, uh, you disrupt their business models. So you make their business models la lack viability, you eat into their profit margin. So they might not want to expand, they might even want to divest from that country, and you've seen countries divesting. But even I think more profoundly uh, to, the, to your question is the issue of expectation. Yes, you, you're, you're paying quite a bit of tax, and today we are seeing KRE has collected the highest ever, mm. two trillion. It's the first time in 14 years that they have uh, exceeded their targets. So we should be able to clap and say, wonderful, but the person on the street will say, a lot of that money will go towards paying debt. A lot of that money will go towards, will fall into corruption. Mm. So even the expectations of that two trillion coming back to you is minimal. And I think that's what really gets into now the fatigue of paying taxes. The fact that, you know, the road outside your restaurant will not be fixed. The security to your house will not be addressed. Yet you're paying that. So there's that issue of accountability mm -hmm. that has to be improved even as we consider the viability of some of the tax measures. All right, and uh, Diambo, as we wrap it up, uh, of course, the tax policy is currently in a draft stage. Uh, what are some of the quick uh, wins you feel need to be there as we finalize the tax policy? I agree with Ndi on one thing, that we cannot be just in increasing taxes. 
um, because on one hand that has a way of slowing down your, your growth but at the same time also you cannot reduce expenditure um, what you need to do is expand productivity so that then we, if we increase the productivity in the country that will increase revenue in the in the long run and so I think we need a stable tax framework that takes into account the need to encourage production as opposed to uh, just killing production with a fix um, with a tax policy but at the same time also let me mention that we have a, a tax system that is quite inefficient um, uh, he had mentioned on e efficiency you see the challenge of the tax itself is it's a very complex uh, discipline uh, because it's both uh, legal and financial uh, so it's already hard and then you make it very difficult with several taxes on top of other taxes. Maybe consolidation will make a lot of sense. And so I am for consolidation. All right. Ishinga, we have to wrap it up. Uh, we are sadly out of time. But uh, great having you, gentlemen. And uh, of course, this remains to be a very interesting topic that we'll continue to dig deeper into in the coming days and weeks, even as we continue the election countdown. And uh, gentlemen, we owe our esteemed viewers uh, proper analysis now of the four manifestos. Now that all the candidates have tabled their manifestos, I certainly look forward to us uh, taking this on perhaps next week. Absolutely. Thank all you right. Very much. Yeah. Thank you. Well, we want to go on a quick commercial break. On the other side of the break, we have BBC Money Daily coming up. And we also have that report on the certification of agricultural farms and what impact this has on the export market. All this coming up after the break. <laughs>